Thank you. Thank you for my, um, very much, Nicole, and very pleased to be in the second time in this kind of, uh, of meetings you have from Netherlands. And let me start by congratulating you for keeping up the spirit, you know, of the national dialogue of, of coming together as a country. What I would like to do in the next maybe seven to eight minutes is, first of all, to give you an update where we stand with the UN Food System stock taking moment and what we have started hearing and uh, what are some of the expectations that the UN Deputy Secretary General has communicated that she wants to see in the strategic moment. So let me start from the um, some practical things. We we have so far um, almost more than 600 registrations. And if you haven't registered so far, please do it as soon as possible. Um, out of the 600, around 400 registrations are from national delegations and the other 200 from the non-state actors. We are just opened the registration for the UN system, so we easy to believe that we will be in, a, in about 800 delega uh, registrations before the end of next week. Um, something that it's only, um, it's, it's, it's mostly for the governments, we have extended the registration for the national delegations, um, and they have some, some, some days more. We have at least a dozen of heads of states of governments that they have confirmed in written their participation. Um, here we have the Prime Minister of uh, Bangladesh, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, the Prime Minister of Guinea, Guinea, Guinea the Prime Minister of um, um, Prime Minister of Nepal, the President of uh, Togo, the President of Tunis, the Prime Minister of Samoa. And these are some of the ones that we have received written confirmation that are coming. There are at least another six to eight prime ministers that we have received uh, a, a verbal confirmation, but I would not like to put their names here because um, script are managed, you know, and um, if it's not written, I cannot, I cannot really announce. But, but we expect uh, anything between 12 to 15 head of states to be there. And we have um, right now officially um, know about uh, 40 ministers that they are coming. And, and these are the, the ones that we have written confirmation. I think if we go to the non-written confirmations, we'll go over to over 60 ministers. One uh, of the things that we are very proud is that we saw a tremendous response to the call we had to the countries for the voluntary reports on what they have done the last two years. And yesterday we reached a milestone of 101 country reports. And if you consider that we have a total of 120 national pathways, 120 is, 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 is a big number, is more than 80% of the countries that they have pathways. So we're really very proud about this. The second number that makes us proud is that, and, but not only proud, but creates a problem to us, is that we received more than 300 of, um, um, of, of submissions for best practices and case studies from not only from government, but from the entire ecosystem of support, from NGOs, from the UN system, on, on what they have done the last two years to support food system transformations. The problem with the 300 is that it's going to be difficult to future all of them in our report, but, but we will make justice to all of them and they will be appearing on our website. And we have also, um, so far, the Deputy Secretary General has um, organized three briefings one was to the member states, uh, where she connected with the permanent representatives in New York, Rome, and Geneva. Uh, and a, a second one was a, a closed briefing for what we call the integrated team of the Food System Summit. It was the team that the Deputy Secretary General had done as an advisory team. And a second uh, and, and a third briefing uh, last week, last Friday, from the Deputy Secretary General to the non-state actors, uh, hundreds of participants there, a lot of questions, a lot of interest. So that's that's some numbers that they give you, uh, I think, the idea that there is a momentum uh, building up to this UN Food System Summit, uh, plus two. And this momentum, actually, we hope that it will translate on, on a very active, concrete dialogue. So what, what we expect in the event in Rome? Uh, now, let me start by what we don't expect in Rome. So we don't want this to be a boring meeting where people will come with predefined statements, will read the statements and will leave. 
we want to do this meeting of interactive dialogue. And this is why even the way that we are designing the plenary sessions is not plenary sessions with uh, statements. It's sessions that they will start with an inspiring panel and then they will give the floor for interventions from the floor, but with an active participation. We have sent out uh, an information note to all participants and a guidance note to national delegations on how to prepare for the stock taking moment. And these documents are available in our website. Please consult them uh, because this will give you an idea how you prepare to come to the stock taking moment. The first day, um, as you know, it has the high level sessions on school meals, climate and finance, together with the uh, high level opening. The high level opening will feature the Secretary General. We have confirmation he's coming the morning of the stock taking moment and he's leaving the day after. Uh, and the day after, he will pass the baton to the Deputy Secretary General to continue the, to continue the meeting. And um, as I said, the expectation now from the Deputy Secretary General and the Secretary General is to see an event where deals will happen. And what they mean by deals? They mean that we will see governments and non-state actors in the private sector agreeing that, okay, we have done some work, but this is additional work we need to do to honor our commitments that we gave back in September 2021. So it's not so much about new commitments, but it's about how we will make them happen and how we'll accelerate them and how we will make sure that whatever we do for the food systems transformation is actually a part of the big agenda of SDG acceleration so we can take the outcomes from the stock taking moment to the SDG summit in September and then to the COP28 and in 2024 to the summit of the future and after the summit of the future start preparing the stock taking moment of 2025 where we will need to, to find another uh, another host government. Another thing that is coming out very strong is that the big there's going to be a big focus on this uh, event on the means of implementation. And it's not only that we have a plenary session of three hours that it's on the means of implementation, but then we have a high level session on finance and specialized special events on trade, on digitalization, on governance, which is means of implementation. Um, and, and actually, the way that we try to choreograph now the discussion about the means of implementation is that we will have the first day, the, the, the high-level session on finance. Then on day two and on day three, we have the special events on digital, digitalization, um, trade, and, and governance. And at the, at the closing of the plenary session, Three, which is a mission presentation, will bring everything together to showcase how uh, we create a very big picture of means of nation finance. And finally, um, another thing I want to say is that uh, in, in this talk taking moment, the Deputy Secretary General will, will launch the effort that we are starting to create a food systems window within the SDG Trust Fund, which is based in New York, and to convince all stakeholders and all donors and all governments that if they want to contribute, in the food system transformation, they need to pitch in and they need to support this uh, this window in the existing trust fund. We don't create a new structure. We use the structure of the UN. These are not money to come to the hub. These are money to go directly to uh, a trust fund that it gives them to the to the country level. None of this money will come to the. Um, this is not money to be managed by the hub. These are money that the hub will provide technical support on how they should be used but they will go directly to the countries. We want to start implementing projects that they go beyond the, the pilots we have now, which is around 30 and $50,000. We have projects that they go uh, up to one, one and a half, two, or even three millions for each country. And here, as, as a country that really uh, is, on, is in the forefront of international cooperation and development, we need your support to have your country contributing on, on, on this effort. Let me finish. I think I'm, I'm reaching the eight minutes now of my briefing. Let me finish by saying that uh, we really, uh, if, if you study the program of the stock taking right now, you will see so many uh, technical, uh, but also technical sessions that we try to cover all aspects of the food system. There are 32 sessions there, and we are looking forward to ideas, solutions, and, uh, and, and guidance 
on what kind of work we would like to see from the hub from 27th of July, when the stock taking moment will be finished, until the next stock taking moment in 2025. Over from me, and uh, again, thanks for inviting me here. Thank you very much, Dr. Fotiu. This is a very clear overview. I think participants will have uh, questions. Take one from the uh, earlier questions. Uh, the role of youth in food systems. How do you see that, Mr. Uh, Fotiu? That was a question from our participants when they registered. Very nice, Sean. So, um, you know, youth is part of our stakeholder um, engagement network. We have uh, representatives there. And in addition to this, there's, um, there's a very big um, youth um, happening that is happening right now. They are preparing themselves for the Food System Summit. And uh, what we want from them is, is to be everywhere. So we debated with them. And actually, we asked them if they want a separate session for the youth. And they say, no, we don't want a separate session for the youth. We want the youth to be everywhere. So what we have tried to do, we gave names of youth representatives we have, what we got from our partners, and we have given them to the organizers of the different sessions to make sure that the youth is really everywhere in this event. And it's not isolated as, as a side event or as a special event, but it's really mainstream. And I have to tell you that the this uh, engagement network of the youth we have right now, it's extremely active. They are very demanding, but it's good that they're demanding. And they give us a headache because we need to answer a lot of their questions, but it's going to be a very active engagement. Thank you. Very clear statement and possibly also a reminder for uh, the, those who are here who organize an event themselves to connect with the youth uh, timely. I see a hand. Uh, Silke Remitz, please. What is your question? Or your, yes, your hi. Uh, this uh, question was by me, actually, that I, I sent in, or maybe someone else sent it in as well, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a person also sent it in. Um, but I, uh, I'm uh, Silke Remitz. I'm, uh, I work at Rijksvane, which is a vegetable uh, uh, seeds breeder. Um, but in my free time, I'm also part of uh, several youth movements, uh, also the World Food Forum, which is happening in October. Uh, and we're part of the World Food Forum Netherlands uh, platform. Um, so I was like, I was wondering at the at the UN Food System Summit last year. I remember wasn't like that active in youth. Uh, so now you mentioned that that like youth are active in in different sessions during uh, during the whole uh, UN Food System Summit this year. Um, how exactly is this like arranged, and in what way are the are the the young people joining diverse and inclusive? So it's just like wondering how this is like all uh, organized. So Sergey, we use two platforms here. Yeah? One is, okay. as I said, the stakeholder engagement network we have. And we have there are people from the youth and we ask them to engage the youth. The second is, you mentioned the World Food Forum, the youth platform. We just, we, we didn't only use them, but we still one important person there. Uh, Michel Sek, if you know her, she was engaging with the youth. Now Michel is working for the hub. And she is actually one that she reached out with the youth and engaged them. I don't have details on names and, and who exactly they conducted, but these are the two platforms, our stakeholder engagement network and the World Food Forum Youth Platform. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. I that's know clear. Michelle well, so that's good. Thank you. <laughs> good. good. Thank you, Silke, for the question. Um, the next question is uh, posed in the chat. So, uh, Bart. I suppose Bart Steenhuis Peters, Wageningen University says to know where we go, we need to know where we come from. Do we have enough collective understanding of the current state of performance of national food systems? The, the excellent question. We we do have um, we, we do have collecting some evidence on what's happening in terms of processes, and that's something we will present in the report of the Secretary General towards the, uh, for the stock taking moment. So from this 101 national uh, voluntary reports and the hundreds of case studies we have received, we start creating a narrative there on what's happening. And what's the big message here? Do countries start, have start walking the talk of food system transformations? Yes, but with baby steps, small baby steps. Fortunately, these baby steps, um, they, they showcase that this baby could become a very 
active teenager and a very important adult. We need acceleration, we need more. Uh, what we have right now, it's small, but I think we have really created the evidence that what happened in the UN Food System Summit, it didn't end it on 21 of September of 2021. Countries continued. Um, if I if I had the time to give you some numbers, I mean, I, I could try to find actually right now my notes, but I cannot find my notes. But we have, for example, that I think that um, around 60% of the countries that they submitted pathways, they have now integrated their pathways in official uh, planning documents. Um, either they have made the pathways an official document or they took the pathway and they put it in the national development plan or something else. About 25% of the countries that they submitted pathways, they have started costing them. So they know to put how much money they need to put uh, up to them. So um, I think in, in a, a next, uh, by the end of next week, or we will be able to share more updates on, on what is the progress we see so far. I know that the next question will be, what about impact? What's happening when it comes to the hunger, when it comes to the malnutrition, when it comes to climate? This is not our job to do, and I have to say very clear, this is a job that is already done through the indicator frameworks of the SDGs. This is the work that UNIP is doing, the, HUB, the PAO is doing, the UNDP is doing. So we're not here to measure these indicators because they are measured very well. We're here to see what is the progress on the thing that started from 2021. And I must say also that it's a little bit difficult to see impact indicators from a process that it expands to a system that has uh, more times, more than annual cycles. And if you do a transformation to your food systems today, you might start looking at the impacts in terms of health, environment, and well-being, maybe after five or six years. Over. Thank you. Yes, so you very thank you for your answer. And uh, interesting to know that this uh, report, this assessment report of the Secretary General uh, will be prepared for the stock taking moment. I think uh, participants here will be pleased to read that and study that. And I think the discussion on indicators is a very relevant one as 